Okay, this is the Mark Screen for Wave Checkpoint 1. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward one, so I'm hoping you've got this completely right or near enough. You really need to get these basic definitions correct, otherwise the rest of the unit will um, be quite difficult for you. So if there's any little thing you got wrong, please try to check it out. So we start with some definitions. So a sound wave traveling through the air, particle displacement, all right, is what it says. It's the displacement of the particle from its equilibrium position. Okay, so the equilibrium position is the crucial thing there. Obviously, it can be forwards or backwards if it's a sound wave. The amplitude, once we've described what a displacement is, all we need to say is it's the maximum displacement. And the wavelength is the minimum distance between two points which are in phase. Or you could write two identical points on the wave. Okay, it's the minimum distance because obviously you might have points which are two wavelengths or three wavelengths, etc. apart. Okay, so the minimum distance is the wavelength. Okay, this question is actually quite kind to you because it's done the tricky bit. It's actually shown you graph A, graph B. These are two graphs which look identical, but remember it's showing you very different things. So graph A is showing you what happens to one particle as the wave goes past, whereas graph B is showing you what happens to all the particles in a section of the wave at one instant in time. Okay, so it, it says uh, show on graph A the amplitude. Well, actually, you could have shown that on either graph, okay? Please be careful, make the effort, get a ruler, draw the line carefully, make sure that your um, arrows actually reach both ends. Label that A. But then the period, T, of the vibrations providing the wave, obviously it's told you to do this on graph A, but it has to be on graph A. Graph B doesn't give you any idea at all what the period is. Okay, what you've got to look for is um, one point doing a complete wave and ending back at the same place. Um, so it could be there, for example, or any two points that are identical, but they'll be that far apart, or that amount of, amount of time apart on that wave. On graph B, show the wavelength. Okay, so the same distance on there is the wavelength, but in this case it actually is a distance rather than a time. And two points P and Q, which are always pi by two out of phase. So what you've got to think here is the complete wave is two pi. So half the wave is pi. So pi by two is a quarter of a wave. So we need any two points a quarter of a wavelength apart. So if you start from the start there, if that's P, then we're looking for that point Q. Obviously, if um, any two points which are a quarter of a wave apart. Okay, some more definitions in question two. So a longitudinal wave is a wave where the particle displacement is parallel to the direction of energy transfer. And a transverse wave, remember trans means across, so the particle displacement is perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. And then the last part, polarization. Um, again, this is a fairly straightforward question because it's just a describe. There's no uh, need to explain why this happens. Um, so if we assume that the polars are parallel at the start, um, which it doesn't actually tell us in the question, what happens is that at the start it's light, but as you rotate Q to 90 degrees when, they've, when you've got cross polars, then there will be no light getting through, so that's a minimum of intensity. And then as you continue to rotate it, when it gets to 180 degrees, um, then you get a maximum of intensity again, and then that pattern repeats again as you go from 180 to 360. It has told you, so Q is rotated slowly through 360 degrees, so make sure you do the whole thing.